I'm Dr. Jared Broadway. I'm a board certified neurosurgeon currently practicing in North Dakota and Minnesota. And I'm here today to discuss sacroiliitis or sacroiliac joint dysfunction. The sacroiliac joint is part of our pelvis. It sits between the sacrum and the ilium. Its job is to absorb forces that would otherwise be um, impactful to the spine. And even though it's a joint that's supported by a lot of different ligaments and muscles, it can de um, develop a little bit of instability and subsequently pain. People who have sacroiliac pain describe a lot of different symptoms. A lot of times if people are uh, changing positions, so if they're going from sitting in a chair to standing, they'll notice pain. Walking upstairs because it's loading that joint differently. Prolonged sitting, prolonged standing can oftentimes exacerbate or worsen that SI joint pain. Even sleeping, people will wake up with increased pain and have to change positions frequently at night. Uh, so there's, there's lots of different ways people present when they've got sacroiliac dysfunction. So if somebody comes in and, and I suspect that the, the sacroiliac joint may be the source of their pain, there's a number of things that I do. First, of course, their history is important. When is their pain? What caused their pain? Do they have a history of trauma? Once I establish that history and I suspect that the sacroiliac joint may be the cause of pain, the next step is an examination. We do what's called the point test, show me where your pain is, it's called Fortin's point. And then I'll, I'll actually place the patient on my examination table and I'll try to move that joint or put pressure on the joint in different ways to exacerbate the pain and see if it reproduces the symptoms that, that are so bothersome. Once we've established that the SI joint is a potential uh, cause of the person's pain, then we are going to move on to formal imaging. Now, I'll tell you that sacroiliac dysfunction is very difficult to diagnose on imaging, like an MRI or x-ray. But what we want to do is rule out another cause of the pain. So for example, does somebody have a herniated disc in their lumbar spine that's pushing on a nerve, reproducing some of those symptoms? I'll refer people to physical therapy because I want to ensure that they're, they've done physical therapy in order to uh, see if that's going to help prior to any kind of intervention. And if that's not working for them, I'll, I'll refer them for a series of injections, their x-ray or CAT scan to ensure that the, um, the medicine gets into the joint. And we typically want to see a greater than 75% pain reduction with the injections. Once those are complete, people will typically circle back to me and we'll see how they are doing and whether or not they're a good candidate for iFuse. I counsel people, let the misery factor drive you. If it's such that you can do most of what you want to do and need to do with some discomfort, then surgery may not be a, the best option for you. But so many people with SI joint dysfunction have been through so many different treatment algorithms. They've been through epidurals, they've been through physical therapy, just kind of stuck in, a, in, in the motions of uh, this chronic pain process and, and they're ready to try something novel. And that's when I think the iFuse implant system from SI Bone is, is really appropriate. The reason I offer my patients iFuse is because it's a minimally invasive procedure, usually done through a two or three centimeter incision. It's quick, usually that surgery takes about an hour. I chose the iFuse implant because of the data that supports it. There are multiple studies that show that this is an efficacious product, meaning it improves quality of life, it decreases pain, and these are reproducible out to five years. And then patient satisfaction rates in general are greater than 90%. So I started offering um, SI Fusion because I had patients who had legitimate pain and I didn't have a good reason for that pain based on traditional lumbar problems. And so looking at the literature, it's very clear that up to 30% of people with chronic back pain may have an SI joint problem. So I needed to have a, a treatment option that would allow me to treat patients with SI dysfunction and pain.